Okay, Carol, thank you so much for hopping on a call with us. We really appreciate it. Um, we are so excited to have you join us for our 30 by 30 video series. And I'm so happy that you could be part of this year's uh, group of people. Yeah, thank you. It's an honor. Um, so let's start off with your role at Apathy is Boring. You're the executive director. Can you describe um, you know, what your organization is and your role within it? Yeah, sure. So Apathy is Boring works to engage youth in our democracy. We're run by young people, we're nonpartisan, uh, and we're pan-Canadian. So we work from coast to coast to coast. Uh, and a lot of people think of us as being active during elections, which we are, but that's not the only thing we do. So we do a lot of civic and community engagement programming as well throughout the years. Um, yeah, and I can tell you lots about it, but that's kind of, that's kind of the quick gist of, of who we are as an organization. and. Myself, I'm the executive director, so I'm responsible from you know fundraising to human resources to just kind of keeping this ship uh, floating. Right, right. Um, now you mentioned that you know people um, see a lot of your your activity during election cycles, but why is it important to engage um, you know your audience about you know um, uh, being politically literate and active when it's not an election cycle? Mm -hmm. um, I would argue it's actually probably more important to do it when it's not an election cycle. So um, during an election cycle, for a lot of young people, that's like it's a five week or two week period when they actually start kind of tuning in and paying attention to the fact that there's an election. Um, but really, the, the things we're trying to tackle is we're trying to build trust between young people and our institutions. We're trying to help young people um, find ways to make changes on the issues that they care about and to and to use the levers of change that we have access to in our government to make those kinds of changes. And a lot of that work takes so much more time than, you know, a couple of weeks leading into an election. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, it's really important that we're actually, you know, the, the project of democracy is a long-term project. And it's not one um, that only pops up every four years, it's a daily project. And so for us, it's really about ensuring that we're helping young people navigate, you know, the, the halls of government and the systems of government and how they can have their voices heard on issues that matter to them, like any day of the week. Or one of the reasons why they're not being as engaged because they feel like they're being spoken down to at all, or is, is it a matter of tone? Um, I I think it really depends on who and what we're talking about. One mm. of the a lot is that, it's, so a lot of people think that young people don't care about issues. Everyone's like, oh, youth are all apathetic. But for us, it's young people have been apathetic with regards to the system. So young people find that government, typically in the studies that we've done, find that government is not a very effective way to address the issues that they care about, right? Because for, for a couple of reasons, some of it is lack of trust, some of it is yeah, with, re regarding lack of trust, you know, some people might feel like there's a hidden agenda or there's an issue around tone in terms of how they engage with those decision makers. But for a lot of it, it's like there's there's a lot of discomfort when it comes to engaging with our formal institutions. And so for us, it's actually about like telling people, young people do care about issues. They care about things that impact themselves, their families, their communities, but they've been choosing alternative ways to be heard on those issues. So they've been choosing social media movements, they've been choosing protesting, they've been choosing community organizing, but they haven't been consistently at the same levels choosing our formal institutions. So they haven't been, um, you know, participating in consultations with elected representatives or voting at the same rates as other generations. Um, and, and those are some of the things that we're trying to highlight is that it's like, it's great for you to be protesting. It's great for you to be advocating on social media but it's also really important for you to be participating in those halls of power. And those halls of power is where our institutions live. And those are the people with a lot of money, a lot of resource, a lot of capacity who can implement things like healthcare in Canada, mm -hmm. which will impact generations and generations and generations of people. So it's also about the scope and the impact that we're trying to encourage people um, to add a lens to in terms of how they go about creating change. 
Sure, sure. Um, now, you know, obviously your, folk, uh, your, your work focuses on engaging young people to be more involved and as active citizens in Canada's democracy. How have you seen young people change in the way that they talk and engage and discuss politics? Um, so I, I've seen a lot of change. I've been at Apathy for seven years now, and I've seen a lot of change in that time frame. So um, seven years ago, voting was not cool, was not like that um, relevant in terms of like our pop culture and and um, yeah, social dialogue, I guess, talking about politics. Um, but when the president when the presidential election happened and Trump was elected, I think there was an increased awareness just regarding the impact of voting um, and what type of people can be elected into into these positions of power. Um, and that kind of generated a bit of a kind of domino effect in terms of conversations happening globally around democracy. And what is what does our democracy look like now? Who is it serving? Who's participating in it? Is it working well for us? What are the challenges? Um, so I'd say in the last four years, especially, there's been a lot more dialogue among just kind of the general population with regards to democracy and civic engagement. Um, and I would also say that the Gen Z segment, which um, is our, you know, right now encompasses 18 to 25 year olds in Canada, um, that they're showing a lot more engagement with regards to social issues, particularly issues like the environment, for example, where we're seeing um, and lots of student protests that were happening in Canada over this year, throughout the year. So, so we're seeing a lot of engagement coming out of that generation as well. So I think those two factors are creating an increased culture of political engagement that I'm witnessing. But it's not a change, it's not a rapid change. It's not something that we, we witness from year to year um, or season to season or, or just because there's an election. It's a bit more of a gradual shift. Right. But, but I am hopeful and we are seeing trends um, of more engagement now than we did, yeah, five to seven years ago. What do you think are the biggest hurdles to mobilizing and engaging young people to be more politically active um, and literate? Um, representation is obviously one of them, making sure that you see yourself um, in, in these ecosystems, but what have you seen have been the other challenges and hurdles um, to get people, young people especially, out there um, and engaged? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many challenges um, <laughs> that we need to tackle. And so I think our perspective at Apathy is Boring is um, we're committed to working within the system to create that change, right? And so what we need is we need to create space for young people to come together and build solutions to the problems that we're facing. So it's not just that there's like a couple logistical barriers for why young people aren't engaging. And if, you know, some people ask, well, if we made voting available online, would everybody start, would all young people start voting? And our, our reaction to that is no, probably not, because we're not actually changing the culture around it. We're not actually changing the systems around it. That's, that's more of a logistical barrier more than anything. Um, and I think what we need to do is we need to be rebuilding the norms around democratic participation and the culture around democratic participation. And for people to buy into that, they need to believe that they can actually create change once they're inside the system. So if you actually like show up and participate and then you realize that all the doors are closing in on you, then you're going to be disenchanted. And that's not going to be a way forward for you to create change in your community. So we need to we need to come together as a community. We need to rebuild kind of norms and culture around democratic participation. But then we also need to change aspects of the system, right? And we need to make it more accessible and we need to make it more transparent. Um, and I would say we need a lot more dialogue between our elected officials and our citizens. Right now, we typically, we really hear from our elected officials during election campaigns. That's when they're knocking on our doors. That's when they want to hear how we feel about things. Um, but they're not usually doing that, you know, in the middle of the year when there's not an election going on. And, and I get it. They're busy, you know, trying to put forward new policies and dealing with a lot of other things. But I think that lack of communication is really kind of eroding trust um, between citizens and our elected officials. I think right now with COVID-19, it's a really interesting moment because 
for the average Canadian, they're really seeing the impacts of their government and they're really hearing from decision makers on a daily basis, not a weekly basis. Um, so in this very unique pandemic situation, we're actually seeing quite a strong link between young people or just people in general in Canada um, and the role of our government and the people who, are, who hold those positions in government. But I think we need more of that, you know, not just during a pandemic, um, but like a l'année longue, you know, throughout the years.